Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, and sometimes hair, so that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not gonna see here on YouTube. So this video first started out as a, another products that changed my skin forever video. And I was gonna do my usual products that changed my skin for the better, and products that pretty much ruined my skin for the worse, but I could not stop listing products that ruined my skin. So I thought, why not just make a video about products I really don't like? So that's what I'm gonna do for you today. These are products that um, I just don't like. I think they're crap, <laughs> basically all of them. But as always with these videos, these are products that have had a horrible effect on my skin. You may be using them right now and absolutely love them, or you may have used them in the past and they've worked perfectly for you. There is a dog hair like on me somewhere. So yes, if you like these products, please, oh for sake. So if you like these products and they're working for you, please, please, please continue to use them. But let's get into it. My first product I really, really don't like, and that's the Clean and Clear Blackhead Clearing Cleanser. This is a product I use in my teens maybe from the age of like 13 to about 15. I have a whole video about what my skin was like as a teenager, you should go and watch it. But I had not acne, but I had a lot of breakouts that I would always pick and they left terrible, terrible scarring. And I do not feel that this product helped with that. Clean and Clear say this is a blackhead clearing cleanser that helps reduce blackheads by removing dirt, oil and dead skin cells. And they say you can use this product anything from once to twice a day to help cleanse your skin and also tighten your pores. And this is where the problem lies. So first of all, I don't get how this is a cleanser. The ingredients, it's, it's not a cleanser. I would actually use this when I was younger. I wouldn't use it as a cleanser, I'd use it as a toner. However, this product needs to be rebranded as a chemical exfoliator. The reason it works against blackheads is because one of its main ingredients is salicylic acid. That's their magical blackhead fighting ingredient. BHA does help reduce the appearance of blackheads, but in this form, this is purely a chemical exfoliator and when used once or twice a day, this can really overly strip your skin, destroy your skin barrier, overly irritate your skin, cause a lot of irritation in general. You do not need to use a chemical exfoliator every single day. So I'm actually looking at the ingredients, I'm like, this would make a pretty good chemical exfoliator. Should I buy it? Maybe. When used two to three times a week, but not every single day. But because it's marketed as a cleanser, I would follow this up with an exfoliator. When I was 13, I didn't know what salicylic acid was. I was double exfoliating because they did not make it clear how this product works. I was being so harsh on my skin. BHA, St. Eyes Apricot Scrub. And I remember whilst I was using this, my skin would be even more oily than it was before I started using this. See Sebum production was crazy. It was also dehydrated and sensitive to everything. And I couldn't understand why but it's because of this product. If this was marketed as a two to three times a week BHA chemical exfoliator, my skin would not have gone as through as much as it did back then. So I hate this product. I don't understand why it's still on sale. I don't understand why, if it is still on sale, they should remarket this. Chemical exfoliators are extremely popular nowadays and that is all this is. I just, I don't understand where the cleanser aspect comes from. Okay, let's talk about Garnier. Oil infused micellar water. I purchased this micellar water when they were all the rage, you know, they just come out and every brand seemed to have like a, an award-winning micellar water. And by that time, I was just getting into double cleansing. So using like a oil cleanser or a cleansing balm and then my normal everyday water cleanser. And I heard that micellar water would make a good first cleanse, which it does. And to be honest, part of me did want like a lazy, like when I used to go out a lot, I wanted to be able to come in drunk, whatever, two o'clock in the morning, wipe my face with micellar water and then go to bed. But that is a lazy attitude. That is a bad attitude. And you should wash your face no matter what. So I thought that this this oil infused micellar water would be amazing. It looks amazing too. Not only could the oil help remove sunscreen that I've been wearing throughout the day, but unlike other micellar waters I tried, hopefully this wouldn't have dried out my skin. So I would use this as the first step in the cleanse. But oh my God, was this stuff shite? It was. It really didn't break down sunscreen. I remember like using it first and it was just like moving. The sunscreen was just moving around my face. It was pretty much a makeup wipe. And I thought to myself, if it's not enough to break down the sunscreen, it's not enough to remove waterproof makeup like it says on the on the front of this product. It would eventually remove my sunscreen after using countless cotton pads to try and remove it. It also dried me out like crazy and broke me out like crazy, like nothing I'd ever used before. I was getting spots in places I'd never broken out before, like on my temples and along here, like whatever this bit's called, the chin. <laughs> it was the only thing in my routine that had changed and it was 100% that. And I'm thinking now, is there any point in having my cellar mixing with oil? Is, is it just not counterintuitive? I don't know. It feels like you're not getting the cleanse of an oil cleanser, you're not getting the cleanse of a micellar water. It's just 
just kind of like moving shit around your face. Whereas the whole point of an oil cleanse is to break down everything and wash it off you so you can then go into a proper cleanse. I'd rather just stick to my oil cleansers because they do a good job. They don't make my skin feel dry. They don't leave that oily film that this micellar water did leave. And they don't break me out and they just get rid of that crap on your face. I hate this product. Whenever I see it in boots, I'm like, ugh. Like, I look at it now, I'm like, why do why did I ever initially pick that up? It's, I think it's just a bit gimmicky as well. Now, it's not often that K-beauty products show up in products I hate videos or brands I'll never review videos, but we need to talk about Laneige Water Sleeping Mask. Okay, so this is by no means the worst product of all time ever, but it was such a letdown for me. I remember, <laughs> like, I've never, uh, products never made me angry, but this really pissed me off. It's a best-selling sleeping mask that keeps your skin hydrated. It prevents um, trans dermal water loss overnight. People love this so, so much. The reviews are incredible. They say they wake up with dewy skin, well hydrated dewy skin that they don't have to do anything with. Perfect. Everything I want in a sleeping mask. So I bought it, I tried it, and initially that evening it felt lovely on the skin, super light. I was using this in summer and it was nice and cooling, light but with just enough moisture and it wasn't sticky. My face wasn't sticking to the pillow. There was a little bit too much fragrance in there even for my standards, but it was okay. And I expected to wake up this dewy, hydrated um, person. Skin that had survived too all overnight, but that just didn't happen. I woke up like, like, wh where did it all go? Where's it all gone? Why is my face tight? Why is my nose dry? My nose never gets dry. I was like, this shouldn't be happening. So that same night, I reapplied just a little bit thicker, concentrated on areas where I woke up dry and where I'm usually dry, like on my cheeks, and woke up dry again. But this time, like, bone dry. Like, someone had come in at night, used a baby wipe to take off the layer of moisturizer, and then let that baby wipe juice dry naturally on my face. I felt dry and tight. My everyday normal moisturizer would have done a better job as a sleeping mask as this did. No, what? Did that make sense? Yeah. I put the product in the drawer of shame in my vanity and hadn't thought about it ever since until this video. The reason I hate this so much is because I'm so disappointed in it. I feel like everybody loves this other than me and I feel that with Laneige nighttime products in general, their night masks and night sleeping masks, I feel like everyone loves them and gets along with them other than me and I really want to like it but I just can't. My skin just doesn't like it. But everyone likes this. I would recommend trying like a mini version and seeing if you like it because this is a bestseller. Let's talk about Cetaphil. I used to really, really like this product. I picked this up because my skin was feeling very sensitive for some reason earlier back in March, April. And this was my answer to a skin friendly, dermatologist approved, nice cleanser. You no, know, gentle on the skin and I really did like it, but for a very limited time. The more and more I used it, the more and more my skin was getting dry and feeling tight. Even after I'd done my whole routine, my skin was just feeling drier than normal. Not dehydrated, I was actually feeling dryness and texture on my skin. I only cleanse my face once a day with a cleanser. In the morning, I splash my face with water, then use like a cleanser at night. So I wasn't over cleansing. I stopped using any actives on my skin. I was using the basics. Then I realized that Cetaphil has sodium lauryl sulfate in, so SLS, which don't get me wrong, is actually fine. It's one of those ingredients that's been um, demonized. It's got a bad rep because of misinterpreted studies. And it's often referred to as being potentially irritating and even toxic. That word gets thrown around everywhere. And yes, it can be irritating in high doses. To quote one of my favorite podcasts, The Eco Well, it's the dose that makes the poison. Everything can be toxic at a certain dose. But two factors that make SLS irritating is the dose and the amount of time it's left on the skin, which in a cleanser isn't that high. You don't get a high dose and you don't leave it on the skin, you wash it away. So with my oily skin, I don't actually mind SLS in my um, cleansers. It's usually quite good for my skin. But SLS can be irritating for dehydrated and very dry skin, which is the stage I was going through. And all I did was pick the wrong cleanser at the wrong time. So when I see it now, I'm like, I just rather not pick it up. I just rather not talk about it. I just rather not use it. I did feature it in a um, like a budget friendly skincare routine and lots of people love it. As I mentioned, dermatologists recommend it and it's fine having SLS in it as long as you're caring for your skin in all the steps after. But for me, I just rather leave it alone and not look at it. It's got horrible packaging anyway. <laughs> Is that it? Oh, okay. I thought I had more than that. One, two, three, 
four. I only had four to bitch about today. But yeah, I feel like I've done that now. And maybe I need to do like a good video next, <laughs> a more positive video next. Let me know what products you really, really hate in the comments down below and why. What I'll do is in the description box, I'll supply what I consider be better alternatives for these products. Help you out a bit, but also let me know what you think are better alternatives for these products. But that's it from me now, guys. I will see you next time.